Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to the Blues of April 2018. We start off with the DVDs I've gotten for Dirt Cheap on King's Day. Now, that's the day where we celebrate our King's birthday, and there's you know, many things going on all over Holland, activities, festivities, flea markets, you know, all kinds of good stuff. Anyway, first up is the Delta Force and Delta Force 2. Got this mainly for two because I already have uh, one on the uh, Arrow Blue. Um, I don't recall ever seeing part two though, but um, yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, Canon films, I also picked up American Ninja, American Ninja 2, 3, 4, and 5. And you know, I, I've got the, um, the Blu-ray set on my wish list for some time, but I didn't want to buy it because I wasn't sure if I was going to like these movies again. It's been years and years since I last saw them. So I'm going to rewatch them, and um, if I like them, I'll buy them on blue. Uh, but this little stack here cost me five euros in total. Seven movies for five euros. That's not a bad deal, right? But the best find is this DVD box set. The films of Alex von Warmedam. Now, he's not very well known overseas. He's a... You know, he makes strange, absurd, uh, uh, tragic comedies. Um, you know, he has, he has his own unique style. You know, he, one of the most original Dutch filmmakers there is. And um, you, you've probably seen or heard of one of his films, and that is Borgman. That's his most well-known film internationally. Uh, but it's not part of the set, by the way. This only has uh, his first six films. He made three more after this. But this set cost me one euro and fifty cent. One euro and fifty cent. How about that? For six movies on there. And this beautiful digi pack, by the way, with some uh, information on the, on each of the film. One euro and fifty cent, how about that? Can't go wrong with that. And now on to the blu rays And the first one is Justice League. Now this is the um, Dutch release. Uh, which is similar to the uh, American one. The only difference is that the American Digibook is a little thicker. Because that one includes the uh, DVD. This one only has the uh, the Blu-ray, and um, uh, the movie was okay. You know, I expected worse, but um, I mean, I, I understand why people like to compare DC movies with the um, Marvel movies. Uh, but if you ask me, you you cannot really compare them. You know, there's a huge difference <coughs> between them. Um, and let's face it, Marvel is the clear winner, you know, I mean, not only because they made more movies, but they have better stories, uh, better written characters, uh, they're more enjoyable, you know, the entertainment value is much higher. And I've, I've just seen um, Avengers Infinity War, and that movie just blew me away. And I don't see DC ever pulling something off like that, you know, in my opinion, anyway. But, um, you know, I, I am, however, curious about the Zack Snyder cut, you know, the original uh, Snyder cut. Snyder was replaced by Joss Whedon, who's the director of the first two Avengers movies. And he did some rewrites and reshoots and recuts, and uh, this is the version that he made, and... Um, for some time, it was known that Snyder left the movie because of a, a personal tragedy. You know, his his daughter committed suicide. Uh, but that was apparently, I'm not really sure, but apparently that was not the reason uh, why he left. He was already fired 
long before that and um, Warner as far as I understood Warner Brothers uh, um, used that tragedy as an, as an excuse you know as the reason why Snyder was no longer involved in Justice League and if that is really the truth because I'm not really sure but if that is the truth then it's absolutely despicable if they use you know his daughter's death as an excuse for something like that but um, you know, there, there's a few people who have seen the Snyder Cut, and they're pretty divided. Uh, there is one who said it's impressive, but there's another one who said it's unwatchable. So I guess we have to wait and see for ourselves, right? Next is the Arrow Video Steelbook of Blade of the Immortal, directed by Takashi Miike. Now this is an awesome movie. It's uh, two and a half hours long, but it just goes by very quickly and there's not one dull moment in it. It's um, based on a popular manga series and Mike could not have made a better choice for his 100 feature film. Yes, he made 100 movies. And I wouldn't be surprised that while I'm recording this video, He'd already made five more movies. You know, he's one of the most productive filmmakers out there. But um, yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Now here's another Japanese movie, Reborn, and um, unfortunately, this one disappointed me. Now in the final half of the movie, you have fight scene after fight scene after fight scene, and I usually don't mind that. You know, I quite enjoy it in in other films, but in this case. It dragged on so much that I became a little bored by it, to be honest, and um, I, d I didn't have that problem with the raid, for example, nor do I have it with um, Blade of the Immortal, but for some reason I had it with Reborn, and uh, you, the, the fight choreography is really good, it, it just repeated itself too much. Another problem that I have with it is the main character, played by uh, Tuck Sakaguchi, or Tuck as he calls himself now. Uh, he seems to have superhuman strength. You know, he, he, he can sense danger, he can dodge bullets very easily, and he does this in a quirky kind of way. Um, you know, if this were a superhero movie, I would have bought it, but it's just a guy who happens to be ex-Special Forces, and I don't think special forces train people to become superheroes or to develop superhuman strength so it was difficult for me to take this character seriously but um you know well, i've been thinking what if takashi miike directed this he would have made something special out of it you know he would have added some dark humor internet into, into it and uh, that's what this film needed you know it, it takes his it takes itself a little too seriously, in my opinion. Having said that, I do want to check it out again. You know, perhaps I wasn't in the right mood for it, but for now, those are my thoughts on this movie. Okay, I picked up uh, three Korean films, and the first one is A Company Man, which is about um, an assassin who wants to get out of the business, but the company that he works for uh, won't allow it. Uh, with the necessary consequences and um, you know story wise it's not very original it's been it's been done many times before but I've always enjoyed watching these kind of movies and uh, this is a decent one um, it's being compared with uh, a bittersweet life but there's no one near it that good by the way um, the next one is a, a better film and that is the suspect now this is um, the Korean answer to Jason Bourne, and it's as if Paul Greengrass directed this uh, this film. You know, it was shot in shaky handheld camera work. You know, and it stars Gong Yoo, who is also in uh, Train to Busan, and he's also in uh, The Age of Shadows, which is the best one of these three uh, Korean films. Um, set in the 1920s when Korea was uh, 
occupied occupied by the Japanese, and this is a fantastic uh, character-driven um, espionage action thriller. You know, with with excellent performances, um, a great smart script, terrifically directed by uh, Kim Ji Kim Ji Woon. Uh, he also made some of the best Korean films of all time, really, including A Bittersweet Life and I Saw the Devil. Absolutely terrific film, this one. Next are some westerns, uh, Italian and American westerns. But we start off with the Italian ones. Uh, I have the two Ringo films here, released by um, Arrow Video. I've never actually seen the second movie, so I'm looking forward to uh, to that one. It's um, you know it's absolutely great that Arrow has released these films on Blue, and it's even greater that they're putting out the Sartana box set with the five original films. Uh, I think we all, you know, we we were all hoping that Arrow was going to do that. At least I know I did. But um, yeah, can't wait to see uh, to get that set and see those movies on Blu-ray. But this is a wonderful set. Really, really wonderful. Also picked up uh, from Kino a fistful of dynamite, aka Ducky Sucker, aka uh, Once Upon a Time the Revolution. Fantastic film by Sergio Leone. And now I can finally replace this dreadful Italian Blu-ray. Now it, it's it's not the the Blu-ray itself that dreadful. It's the packaging. I mean, look at that. Uh, oh, I got this in it because you know this is this how how the disc was inside. I mean, this is not how you house a Blu-ray, right? So I don't know what these guys were thinking, but um, yeah, I'd rather have this this sturdy key case. It would have been nice if they did a um, digi pack or even better a digi book. But you know, if I had to choose between these two uh, packaging keep case or this clamshell then I would certainly choose the uh, keep case next is also a Kino release and this is The Long Riders an extraordinary western by Walter Hill with Rear Brothers playing Rear Brothers I mean you have the Keats brothers playing the uh, James brothers you know Jesse and Frank James you have the Carradine brothers playing the, the Younger brothers. You have the Quaid brothers playing the Miller brothers. And you have the Quest brothers playing the Ford brothers. That's a lot of brothers. But, um, you know, originally, um, the British brothers, Bo and Jeff, was going to play uh, the Ford brothers. But they couldn't do it because of scheduling conflicts. But, uh, yeah, extraordinary film. And the scene near the end where they trying to rob the bank and escape town, you know, with the with the sound effects and the pack and paw esque slow motion and all that, that's a brilliant piece of filmmaking. It's um, yeah, an extraordinary film. It really is. Next one is Remrod, uh, a great noir western by Andre de Tarte. Now, he's a director who's not well known, uh, but he was a master in westerns and film noir particularly. Uh, he made films such as Pitfall, um, Crime Wave, The Indian Fighter, uh, Play Dirty with Michael Caine, House of Wax with Vincent Price. You know, he was a fantastic filmmaker. And this film stars uh, Joe McRae and uh, Veronica Lake, who was married to Andre de Tarte at the time. And she, well, she basically plays a femme fatale in this one. It's, it's really a, a film noir, but it happens to be set, uh, you know, in the Wild West. But, uh, yeah, wonderful film, wonderful film. And speaking of Andre de Tarte, he also made this excellent western, Day of the Outlaw, which is about uh, a feud between a cattleman and a homesteader. And when this feud reaches its highest point, Beryl Ives and his gang wash into town and takes the whole place over. Um, 
Now it says here, screenplay by Philip Jordan, and if you look at his filmography, you'll see that he's responsible for many great films, including Johnny Guitar, uh, Detective Story, The Heart of Day Fall, El Cid, 55 Days at Peking, Fall of the Roman Empire, and he even wrote some horror movies in the 1980s, uh, like The Unholy and Night Train to Terror. However, there are stories that he didn't write those films himself. Apparently, he hired people uh, to do the writing for him, and some of them were blacklisted screenwriters. And there's a, an interview on, on this uh, Blu-ray with um, a French filmmaker, Bertrand Tavonnier. I think I pronounced that right. Um, and he tells more about uh, uh, Jordan. But uh, basically, the screenplay of Day of the Outlaw was written by André de Tart himself, with the help of um, uh, Robert Ryan, the lead actor. So if you ever watch a film that says screenplay by Philip Jordan, there's a big chance he did not write it. Speaking of which, here is another one that has his name on it. The Man from Laramie, and here it is, right there, screenplay by Philip Jordan, right? But this, this is a marvelous western, and it's also the final collaboration between uh, James Stewart and director Anthony Mann. Uh, they've made eight films together, five of them are westerns, and this is arguably the best one. It's a... Uh, yeah, it's such a fine film, and a beautiful read by um, by Eureka, with the uh, booklet and the the two disc, the DVD and the Blu-ray. There, wonderful set. Okay, next are four releases from Indicator, and they're all movies with Jack Nicholson. And the first one is The Border, really good film. I always thought that this has a, a Sam Peckinpah vibe to it. And there's a link between this movie and Pack and Paul, and that is um, uh, Waylon Green, the uh, the screenwriter. You know, he wrote the screenplay of, of The Border, but he also wrote the screenplay of um, uh, The Wild Bunch. Yep. The Last Detail. A classic independent film, this one. You know, Richard Linklater recently made a um, sort of sequel to this called Last Flag Flying, with uh, Brian Cranston as the Jack Nicholson role, and uh, Lawrence Fishburne as the uh, Otis Young character, and Steve Carell playing the um, uh, Randy Quaid uh, uh, character. I'm curious about that, about that uh, movie, by the way. Uh, next one is The Fortune. Now this was um, a box office failure, you know, and it's, it's not for everyone. But it's also a bit of a mess, you know, they started shooting this film with a incomplete script. You know, there was no third act, so they had to come up with a, with a third act while they were making it. But I enjoy it, you know, it's, it's a bit of a throwback to the 1930s, 1940s screwball comedies, you know. And the last one is The Passenger. I'm very happy that this has a, a, a Blu-ray release. And this is an amazing film by an amazing director, uh, Michelangelo Antonioni. Um, Jack Nicholson plays a um, reporter who's tired of his life and of his job, and he sees an opportunity and he grabs it with both hands. He switches identities with a dead Englishman who happens to be uh, an arms dealer. Um, you know, th this film is not everyone's cup of tea. You know, if you're familiar with Antonioni's work, you know that he really takes his time to tell stories. And they're, you know, they're slow burners, his films. And uh, not everyone appreciates that, which is a shame because he's one of the uh, true masters of, of cinema. Not only because of Italian cinema, but just of cinema in general, you know. But... Um, yeah, that is it for my April update. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.